The War of Bettany Could there be a better proof of the natural perversity of Bretons than their conduct before, during, and after what history will remember as the War of Bettany? By the most depraved of motivations, the most despicable of tactics, and the most ungentlemanly of triumphs, the kingdom of Daggerfall changed the nature of warfare in the Iliac Bay, and perhaps over all of Tamriel. In Sentinel we call the recent carnage the Siege of Bettany, but as the book of history is writ by the victors, let us speak instead of the War of Bettany. Red Guards, by their nature, are a modest and practical people. We are not phlegmatic like the High Elves, nor cowardly like the Wood Elves in Gajiti. But what would infuriate and enrage the swaggering, vainglorious Nords and Bretons would not merit a shrug from a Red Guard. Had any Breton kingdom possessed the little island of Bettany, it would have been covetously guarded. Bettany's trade would have been seriously restricted, its religion subjugated, its people bound by active and constant pledges and duties of vassalage. But Bettany was not a Breton dominion. Bettany was part of the kingdom of Sentinel. King Lysandus, may the old ones continue to torment his soul for his weakness, saw the prosperous island which is closer to his land than to Sentinel, and his black heart turned to avarice. Through threats, lies, acts of piracy, and finally invasion, Daggerfall illegally took possession of the island of Bettany. His court sorceress, the Lady Medora, his enchantress mother, and other experienced counselors were horrified by the brutality of his companion, and begged him to abandon his tyrannical act of war. Gradually, all dissenters were removed from court. None but the ignorant and the warmongers remained. Our late King Cameron tried to employ civil diplomacy with Daggerfall, but in the end he made the former declaration of war. Daggerfall and Sentinel have fought many times in their two thousand years of coexistence, and Cameron knew the black magic and espionage the Bretons considered it honest warfare. Never debasing the Sentinel character by duplicating the Breton villainy, Cameron knew best how to combat Lysandus. King Lysandus' knavish battle tactics were even more perfidious than his ancestors, and the war continued to rage until it began to involve more than Sentinel and Daggerfall. Lord Graddock, ruler of Reich Gradkeep, acted as conciliatory between the Sentinel and Daggerfall, and eventually convinced both monarchs to meet and make peace. The ill-fated Treaty of Gradkeep began civilly. The terms of peace were discussed and agreed on, and set to paper. The terms were excessively generous. Cameron had agreed to give up some of his rights to Bettany in order to placate the madness of Lysandus and bring peace back to the Iliac Bay. It was not until King Cameron read the treaty he was about to sign that he realized the outrageous perfidy of the Bretons. The treaty had actually been purposefully miswritten by the Daggerfall scribe in a desperate and ignominious attempt to trick Cameron into signing a contract different from the one at which he had agreed. The castle of Reich Radkeep erupted into bloodbath, and the war continued. The Battle of Cregain Field was the tragic ending of the senseless war of attrition. The Cregain Field is located in between the Yareth Burland and the Ravinian Forest, where the armies of Sentinel and Daggerfall respectively make camp after the massacre at Reich Radkeep. As the battle began, Daggerfall proved that she had some foul, daedric magical tricks left by blinding the Red Guard army with the Wall of Mist. Lysandus did not have the opportunity to gloat over his cozenage for long, for the sure arm of sentinel thick swirling fog. Lysandus's son Gothrid, who has spent the battle in lugubrious relaxation, was crowned without ceremony and thereupon demanded a duel with King Cameron. Cameron was many years Gothrid senior and thought a superior warrior. Was exhausted from the endless warfare the boy king had been spared. Nevertheless, as a point of honor, our king agreed to the duel. The new king of Daggerfall, by dirty trick and black magic, managed to backstab our king before the duel ever began. Thus, the victor of Kringane Field and the War of Bettany was Daggerfall. Daggerfall's wickedness continued even after her inglorious victory. While the widow queen of Sentinel, Her Majesty Akurithi, mourned and tried to mend her shattered lands, Gothard demanded the princess of Sentinel as a hostage of war. To save her homeland, the princess Aukki agreed to leave Sentinel and even marry the murderer of her father. But we true ready guards of Sentinel know where her love and honor lies. 
the Queen of Daggerfall is the Princess of Sentinel first and foremost.